live here at Barangay Mako Davao de Oro. Who will be the next Queen of Masara 2023? Sponsored by France Fans. Candidate number one, Ariana Nicole Aguito, Province of Bukidnon. Candidate number two, Phil Glenn Jason Baloro, Cebu City. Candidate number three, Rodjin Montes Buhian, Davao City. Candidate number four, Angel Montenegro, Kidapawan City. Candidate number five, Bem Bem Abeliana. Digo City <laughs> Candidate number 6 Penelope Mimi Arawira General Santo City <laughs> Number 7, Jane Tejanes, Tagum City. Candidate number 8. Eden Rion Rivera, Cagayan de Oro City. Candidate number 9, Jesse Jane Petalona, Panabo City. Astounding performance, tonight's show, Queen of Master 2023. Tonight, nine of the most ambitious and interesting women all around Mindanao will compete for the crown of Queen Masara 2023. Corresponded by renowned host Ella Manuel from Davao City. The month of June is about to end, but this doesn't stop the pageant world from arising. This night, nine beautiful and sexy candidates who are considered as veterans in the pageant world will compete their very best in their quest to bring home the crown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is again Ella Manuel, and join me as I welcome you to Miss Gay Masara 2023, the Grand Coronation Night.
Hello trans families, here we are again for another Chichen series with our candidate number two, Philgren Baloro. Hello, how are you tonight? Hello, good evening. I'm doing, I'm doing just fine and I am just so happy to celebrate the first night here in Mako. Oh, thank you so much, man. First of all, I really appreciate the fact that you're wearing this kind of creative jersey. You look so godly. You look like a Sikh goddess. Can you tell us what is the inspiration of this creative jersey? Um, thank you so much for that. Well, ever since I was a child, I am actually a fan of Disney movies. Uh, so this is actually inspired by Ariel. And it, it is designed by one of Davos' famous designers, Mr. Evan Fernandez. Oh, this is designed by Evan Fernandez. I knew her personally. And you're, th that specific gene or creative gene really suits you well. Well, do you have anything that you would like to thank? Uh, I would like to thank my team, um, Mr. Manai Chains Garcia of Pagum City, uh, my manager, Gwen Darwin and Earl Joshua, and also to my boyfriend, Lisa Justin Neely, for being so supportive with me. All right, thank you so much for that. Candidate number two, we have a lot of things to look uh, um, look forward for this entire competition, so we'll get back to you. Let me know, give a wave of the camera and a flying kiss. This part of the competition will give us a burning sensation as our nine lovely candidates will set the stage on fire, flaunting their curves on their body as they will walk through the swimsuit competition. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you our nine lovely candidates for their swimwear. Swimsuit competition. Candidate number one, Ariana Nicole Aguitong, province of Bukidnon. Stands 5 feet 8 inches tall with a vital statistics of 34, 24, 35. Candidate number 2 Phil Glenn Jason Baloro, Cebu City. Stands 5 feet 7 inches tall with a vital statistics of 33, 26, 36 Candidate number 3 Rodjin Montes Buhian Davao City Stands 5 feet 6 inches tall With a vital statistics of 33 26 36 Candidate number 4, Angel Montenegro, Kitapawan City. Stands 5 feet 7 inches tall with a vital statistics of 33, 26, 36. Candidate number 5, Bem Bem Abeliana, Digo City. Stands 5 feet 7 inches tall with a vital statistics of 33, 26, 36. Candidate number 6, Penelope Mimi Arawiran, General Santos City. Stands 5 feet 5 inches tall with a vital statistics of 33, 26, 36. Number 7, Jane Tejanes, Tagum City. Stands 5 feet 5 inches tall with a vital statistics of 33, 26, 36. Candidate number 8, Eden Rion Rivera, 
Cagayan de Oro City stands 5 feet 5 inches tall with a vital statistics of 33, 26, 36. Candidate number 9, Jesse Jane Petalona, Panabo City, stands 5 feet 5 inches tall with a vital statistics of 33, 26, 36. during the swimsuit competition round but only one stood out and this year's best in swimsuit goes to candidate number number three So where? Hello. Once again, we have her here now. Can I ask? I'm just really curious. What is the secret behind the beautiful body, the curves, and the femininity? Well, I just prayed on God to give me a sexy body chart. Well, I do my diet, and my rice is corn, so that I cannot gain too much sugar, so that I cannot gain weight. So I always eat corn rice. So there you have it, and you know exactly what's the secret behind everything? You should eat corn rice instead of greens. Thank you so much, candidate number four. This segment is the most anticipated part of the competition, as our nine lovely candidates will be wearing an evening gown designed by their chosen designer to make an on-stage statement of compelling grace, posture, and beauty. Ladies and gentlemen, are you excited? Because I am. Once again, our nine lovely candidates for their evening gown competition. Evening gown competition. Candidate number one, Ariana Nicole Aguiton, province of Bukidnon. Phil Glenn Jason Baloro, Cebu City. Candidate number three. Rajin Montes Buhian, Davao City. Seems like every time I get ahead, I end up going two steps back. So tonight, I'm just gonna let this one fly. You know what I mean? Candidate number four, Angel Montenegro, Kidapawan City. Candidate number 5, Bem Bem Abeliana, Digo City. Take me home, take me on a ride. I got a good feeling about the colors lighting up your eyes. 
Number 6, Penelope Mimi Arawiran, General Santo City. Candidate number seven, Jane Tejanes, Tagum City. Tell me the only thing you are is mine. Take me home, take me on a ride. I, I got a good feeling about the colors lighting up your eyes. Take me home, take me to the sky. I, I got a good feeling. Tell me the only thing you are is mine. Now. I got a good feeling. Candidate number eight, Eden Rion Rivera, Cagayan de Oro City. Candidate number 9, Jesse Jane Petalona, Panabo City. of how hard it is to be a judge as all the candidates walk with their evening gown with beauty, grace, glamour, and elegance. But of course, since this is a competition, only one made a remarkable performance. And this year's best in evening gown goes to candidate number... Three! Hi Trans fans, this is again for another Trans Fan Series with our candidate number 8 and you're from Tagum City, right? May I ask for your name please? Your name. Uh, my name is Eden Rion Macasaro Rivera. And how old are you? I think you're the youngest of all the candidates tonight. Yeah, I think. I am 24 years old right now. Alright, you look so feminine. What is something that I actually... Um, what, I'm, what, what I'm actually thinking about you wearing that gown is that you look so divine. Can you tell me who designed it? And what is the inspiration of the gown? Yeah, just like uh, what, I, what I've heard earlier, this is actually a Thailand-inspired gown. This is created by Alvin Makassi. Yeah, she, uh, he is also a makeup artist and a designer from Tagum City. Oh, she's from Tagum City. So the entire team is from Tagum City. Well, we wish you all the best and congratulations in advance. We'll be looking forward to see you on the next part of the competition. Top 5 finalists.
congratulations, candidate number one. Question and answer portion. Despite contributing billions of dollars in the Philippine National Academy, it is very evident that mining brings destruction to the environment and to our nature. How will we fight this problem given that mining cannot and will never be stopped? Thank you for that. That's really a good question because we are here in a certain place where mining is considered as one of the most important kind of living. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to, to tell you that if dollar will increase, definitely the Philippine economy is really depressing. So, mining is a kind of living that we should always promote. Why? We are living in a third world country. We need to improve. We need to increase our Philippine economy. By mining, it really contributes our Philippine economy in terms of increasing our economy. What we should do in terms of destruction, the negative effect of mining. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not be hypocrite because there's a lot of doings that really distract our mother earth. It's not only mining, such as throwing your garbage anywhere, such as the different kinds of technology that every single human here in the Philippines is creating. So we should not only blame mining because aside from the negative effect of mining to the mother earth, there's a lot of family that is really helped by mining by providing the needs and the wants of their family. So let's do mining but let's be responsible and let's consider the negative effect, those negative doings, don't just blame mining because Look at your place, a very wonderful, a very rich natural resources of food. So let's do mine. Thank you. How will you handle a situation if you found out that your father is having an affair to a transgender like you? Thank you so much. In my 26 years of existence, my parents always taught me to believe in God to be on yourself and be always thankful for what you believe in. In my 26 years, I haven't experienced that my father has been in a transgender woman. But the question was goes like that, that if my father was relationship with a transgender, I think there's nothing wrong without it. Because first and foremost, my parents are a member of the Couples for Christ. They are serving in God. And I always believe that that's transgender. When I go out to closet as transgender, and they are a member of diocesan, apostolate and a member of couple for Christ, they never question my identity, but rather they embrace my identity as transgender. Then if that would happen to my mother, I would definitely accept what the decision of my father is. Because I certainly believe that there is reason for everything. And that reason should always us to remember that whatever decision of our parents, if that would make them happy, let us then be happy for them. Because I always believe that what our parents taught for us, and for us as, a, as a kids and as a children, will always be nurtured for every legacy for what we're doing in life. Maayong gabi. As we celebrate Pride Month, how will you explain this celebration to a nine-year-old child. Okay, thank you for the nice and interesting question. Before I answer that question, I would like to give an appropriate answer that can sure, surely give an understanding not just only for me, but for all of us. I strongly believe that each and every little thing in this world has its own purpose of existence. So we better live life love our life for the benefits of everyone. Let's go back from the very basic. How can I describe 
LGBT Pride celebration to a nine-year-old child. We all know that nine-year-old child has its own mind. We have all mind. Even though we are immature, but still we can understand as long as we give education to the nine-year-old child or to, to the youth nowadays. Because I firmly believe that education is a systematic training to the moral and intellectual faculties. And by this, I always join in beauty pageants like this. It is because I want to open the mind, the heart, and the eyes of every individual, not just only for nine years old, but for all of us, that we LGBTQ community deserve to live in this world and to celebrate our existence. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot deny the fact that we've been discriminated by other people. But by that, I firmly believe that all of us are God created. Because we are, even though God is the creator of everything that is existing on earth, we owe everything in Him. We should praise Him, give glory to Him above all. We should thank Him through kindness and good deeds. And always inculcate in our mind that God is the center of our lives. And I know that nine-year-old child will understand what we are celebrating right now as we have our Miss Dean Maserat 2023. Good evening. Thank you so much. A candidate number four, Miss Angel Montenegro. Next up, can if you are God for a day, how would you change the world? As we all know that this the world is facing war. And I know for a fact that war is what happens when language fails. So if given a chance to be a god, I will definitely promote the art of diplomacy. But whatever we do, we should be able to act peacefully, regardless of any issue we can be able to solve it peacefully. And if I will be God, my message to each all of you is to emphasize what is the real meaning of peace. If you will try to look at this holistic approach, the real meaning of peace is for B, political instability. E is for economic growth. A is for assimilation of minorities. C is for camaraderie of all races and E is for equality. Where indeed it is very essential we should be able to apply to our daily lives. Because right here, right now, we have a lot of differences. We have a lot of any issues, but what most important is you should be able to have a peace in yourselves so that, that because you can be able to have a peace by everybody else. Remember, if I will be God, this is the song that I will definitely sing. Or song that I will sing. If you are given a chance to create a symbol that is best represent your personality, what would it be and why? Thank you so much. If I'll be given a chance to create a symbol that will signify or um, symbolizes myself, I would just simply put a heart. Why? Because as a member of the LGBT community and as a trans, knowing that we are known to be one of the most marginalized members of the community. I wanted to share the message of hope and love to one another. To to especially that we are celebrating the LGBT pride, we have to spread the message of love to one another, to understand and to create a world that is that love and to be love is very important that will eradicate chaos and hate. And that is why that simple heart may be just a simple symbol that will, that will um, symbolize, symbolize me. But I know that if we instill in our mind to love someone, that is always just a simple wish that we wanted to achieve, to be loved and to give love and to feel love. And I'm happy that my family and friends have given me that love. And I hope that for those who have not experienced love and they only have hate in their heart, try to open your mind and heart to try to understand other people and live life with empathy. Because that, you will understand the value and the essence of love. Thank you. Candidate number three, Rajin Montes Buhian. 
Davao City. Number 4. Angel Montenegro, Kidapawan City. Candidate number 6. Penelope Mimi Arawira, General Santo City. Every time I get ahead, I end up going two steps back. So tonight, I'm just gonna let this one fly. You know what I mean? Candidate number one, Ariana Nicole Aguito, Province of Bukidnon. I am with, of course, the newly crowned Miss Gay Masara 2023, no other than Rojin Buhian. Hello, what can you say about the entire event, your experience, everything? What are you feeling right now? That is just one thing that we really, as part of many questions that I really want to throw to you, but I know you really wanted to enjoy every single moment, so what is it? Oh, thank you so much. First of all, thank you to, to Lord Jesus Christ for a very wonderful blessing, very wonderful night. And I am so thankful to be here because it's my act, it's my first time here in Masara, but I never ever feel like I'm new here. Like this is my second home. I claim it. So thank you. Well, I'm pretty sure that the people of Masara will welcome you all throughout the year of your reign. And thank you so much again for gracing our invitation. And once again, congratulations and see you back to the next competition. TransFans is a social media platform specifically created for beautiful and talented transgender. We are looking for an ambassador that will represent the entire social media platform and of course, who will be the face of TransFans. And this year's Miss TransFans is no other than candidate number... Once again, our candidate number three, Rojin Buhian. First of all, I would really like to say congratulations because not just one, but you actually brought almost all of the awards tonight. And you are also a crowd favorite. Thank you so much. And also thank you to my most favorite award, which is Trans Fans, because Trans Fans is really one of the most admired organizations that really uplift our trans community. So thank you so much, Trans Fans. Well, you will be one of the, one of the, um, uh, the ambassadors of Trans Fans, and we will be looking forward to be working with you soon here. And, and thank you so much again, once again. Hi, everyone. My name is Regine Montes-Buhian. I am your former 
Sarah Reina Dapawenya. I am encouraging all those people to follow Transpans. So for the information of everybody, Transpans gathering different kinds of pageants and also give different kinds of stories from our trans sisters. So I hope that you will going to follow the Transpans page from Facebook, YouTube and TikTok. Thank you. It was indeed a very tough competition and I was given the opportunity, of course, to meet those queens from several parts of Mindanao to compete just in one stage. That is a history. And thank you so much. It was a wonderful night. We would like to thank all of the people who have come to this entire event to make this event successful to the organizers, to the barangay officials of Masara and of course, we would like to congratulate the newly crowned Miss Gay Masara 2023, our candidate number three. Once again, this is Ella Manuel, and thank you so much. We will be seeing you back for the next competition.